Hey, it is Christian and it's video blog time. Um, I have been speaking for the past couple of days in Boston, Massachusetts at a conference. Uh, thousands of people uh, were engaged by the Word of God and it was a really amazing time with the Lord and hanging out with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, before I left, I'm getting ready to jump on a plane to head back to Charlotte to my beautiful family. I got my son Isaiah with me. He's running around here somewhere. Uh, but I decided to come to Plymouth, Massachusetts, man, where the Mayflower landed hundreds and hundreds of years ago, man, in the early 1600s. Uh, why did I come here? Because there is a lot of tradition. Not only that, but there's a lot of great fish as well. Just chomped down on some lobsters a while ago, man. Lobsters. Uh, so it's been a great time, man. But I wanted to come to a place that not a lot of people in America know about. It's a place that has an 81 foot tall uh, granite statue, like the tallest granite statue in the country. Matter of fact, I was asking people that live in this town, they didn't even know this place was here. How do you miss an 81 foot tall statue uh, in your own hometown? Uh, why do a lot of people not hear about this statue? Well, personally, I think because our government doesn't want to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ anymore. And this statue was left behind by our founding fathers because they wanted us to understand some of the things that they put on this statue. And we're going to talk about that in a second. First of all, I want to say I love this country. Um, I love what our country stands for, or at least what it used to stand for. I can remember when 9-11 happened by the time the second building actually got crashed into by the plane. I found myself at the Marine Recruiting Station. I was actually signing up to join up to be a Marine. They turned me down. They said I was too old. I went to the Army. I went to the Navy. I think the Air Force was going to put me back in college, so I said no to that. But I went home and my wife was like upset. She said, what in the world were you thinking? Why would you ever try to join up without even talking to me? I said, baby, I wasn't thinking. I'm a patriot. I love this country. And so, uh, man, I, I love being an American. I love what we used to stand for. And I'm excited about some of the things that's happening in this country today. I'm excited that we have the ACLU that is actually suing us right now because I preached the gospel in a public school and 324 teenagers gave their life to Christ. I received a lot of hate mail from Christians, that's right, so, well, so-called Christians, who said that there's no reason to ever preach the gospel in a public school, even though it says in the Bible that Jesus came to save those who were lost and sick, which is exactly where a lot of lost people are in public schools. Uh, I've been uh, under attack here recently because I am speaking out against homosexuality and I stand for one man and one woman. I'm okay with that. I'm excited about people getting upset because I'm ruffling some feathers. Um, I've been under attack a lot about uh, pro-life and that there is no reason at all under any circumstances to ever have an abortion. That God always has a plan and His plan is always lived out to perfection if we will follow His teachings and live up to His commands. I've also been under attack a lot because I believe in Genesis to Revelations. And there's a lot of people in the country today that are actually picking and choosing what scriptures they want to believe in instead of taking the teachings of Jesus Christ as the truth of the gospel. And so, it's going to be a good year. The challenge for this video blog is this. What feathers are you ruffling in 2012? What trouble are you starting for the kingdom? Uh, you know, just, just a, a small side note. The first Bible ever put into print in this country was put into print by Congress. And they put it into print to give it to the public school system to teach our public school kids about the importance of having a relationship with Christ. That stood for 300 plus years until one person decided that they were going to fuss and complain and start a ruckus. And 300 years of tradition went away because one person decided to complain. And I got to ask myself, where were all the Christians during that time? You know, who was fighting that battle? So, you know, for 2012, man, I'm going to fight hard because I believe that our founding fathers have a plan for our life. And it's not to sit back and be complacent and not let our voice be heard. So let me show you this statue. And let me show you what this country was founded on. Let me show you uh, what the Mayflower, the pilgrims that were on the Mayflower. Let me uh, show you what they actually believed in their heart that this country should be about and live up to. Check this out.
At the top of this statue is a lady called Faith. She's holding a copy of God's Word and she's pointing up to heaven with a star of wisdom on her forehead, basically saying that the scriptures give us wisdom. Not some scriptures, scriptures but the entire Bible, Genesis to Revelations, all scripture is the breath of God according to 2 Timothy 3.16 and our founding fathers believed in that. They also believed in the importance of morality, standing up for what is right. One of my favorites over here, they also believed in the importance of the evangelist, sharing the gospel. They believed in the importance of the law. And if you can see a picture, I don't know if you can see this, but he's holding the Ten Commandments. They also believed in the importance of mercy, which is very important. They believed in youth. They believed in the importance of education. They believed in the importance of wisdom. They believed in the importance of liberty. And that liberty came at a cost. Here is something called tyranny. If you look there, there's a lion with a claw wrapped around his shoulder. That represents England and how they had to overcome a lot of that tyranny in England to come here and have the liberty that we have today. So, tucked away in the middle of nowhere is a statue. It means a lot to me. What does it mean to you? What are you going to do with your 2012? This country is worth fighting for. The Bible's worth fighting for. Our foundation is worth fighting for. Fight hard. Peace.